It's March, spring is just around the corner, even though we're still getting snow flurries outside. Let's talk garden planning. I'm Jen. Welcome to the Sunshine Farm. There are a lot of new people here thanks to the very, very kind shout out from Jess and Maya at Roots and Refuge Farm. We gained a lot of new friends. I'm grateful for you being here. I look forward to connecting with you and learning about you. Please comment below and introduce yourself. I'd love to learn who our subscribers are and get to know you guys a little bit better. If you're subscribed but you haven't hit that bell, please hit the bell. I want you guys to see when we post our new videos so you don't miss out on what's going on here on the farm. So today, I want to talk to you guys about my fun, exciting, a little bit silly plans for our garden and share with you some exciting things that we're planning on growing that we haven't grown in the past, but I'm really looking forward to seeing how they can increase our self-sufficiency, especially since Chris and I are plant-based. All of our food can come right out of the garden. This year, we are expanding our garden space from about 1,500 square feet to over 4,000 square feet. So we have some big changes coming, and there are a few different goals that I want to accomplish. First, of course, is to grow tried and true varieties that we love, that we grew last year, that we were so happy with. Things like buttercup squash. And then another thing I'm wanting to do is to add a lot of new varieties to our garden. Last year, I didn't plant a lot of things that I discovered I could plant, and basically since last summer, every time I think of something that I eat, I try to find if there's a way I could grow that thing. So for example, we enjoy garbanzo beans or chickpeas, and I wanted to be able to grow them here, so this summer I am going to be trying out garbanzo beans. Another thing that I'm really looking forward to trying out is growing enough beans to use the dry beans and meals. And we'll see how successful I am with this. It might take a few years to determine how many plants we really need, but with 12 and a half acres and plenty of room to plant, I am okay with this process taking a little bit of a long time in order for us to figure out how much do we need to grow of certain things. The other thing I'm wanting to try this year, which I haven't created a great plan for yet, but I'm wanting to grow a tea garden. And so really what this is going to look like, it's going to be a little bit wild. It's going to be planting perennial herbs, things that are going to be coming back every year. And alongside that, I might bring in some pots for things like mint that tend to take over. And I'm also going to be planting some roses, some different flowers. And this is going to be to the left of the garden where I eventually hope to have a greenhouse. And I'm going to be filling the tea garden with herbs, like this Thai basil, holy basil, catnip, dark opal basil, Italian large leaf basil, all of the basils, <laughs> mint, chamomile, rosemary, stevia, oregano, thyme, parsley, and sage. I'm hoping this creates a whimsical feel and almost like a sense of magic in the garden. So I'm really looking forward to jumping in on this. I have my little trusty garden planner cat here. She is essential when you're planning a garden. <laughs> One more silly plan for the garden that I will share at the end of this video. <laughs> and I think that you guys will appreciate this. One thing I'm really looking forward to this year is being more intentional about growing plant-based protein in our garden. One, because I just want to see how much can we grow in this space, and two, I just want to show people that there are so many protein options that are plant-based. People often ask us, how do we get enough protein? And there is a lot of protein to be found in the garden. 
So for example, spinach is a great source of protein. Beans have a whole lot of protein, so I'm growing things like edamame, which is soybean, aka butter bean. Why do plants have so many beans? It's really confusing. Sometimes I'm like, oh, I need to get a hold of butter bean, and I already have it. I'm even growing quinoa this year in amaranth, so I'm really looking forward to seeing how I can use those grains and how complicated it is to grow. I'll even be trying chia seed, which should be interesting because apparently it doesn't grow well here, but I'm going to see if I can make it work. Something about growing beans makes me really excited. Like edamame, it's so delicious when it's in the green pod, but it's also really good if you let it dry out and then use the dry bean to make things like tempeh, which is a fermented soy patty that is really nutty in flavor, really good for you, packed with protein, natural, and also can be good for your gut because it's fermented. And I have soybeans that I saved from last year's garden, and I'm going to probably be planting these along with the other edamame I bought to see if these beans adapt over time to our climate because I didn't have a lot of success with them last year, so I'm just curious to see if over time, if I continue to plant these beans, if I will notice improvement in the quality of the plant. Another thing I'm really excited about is peanuts. I know that they're not amazingly prolific in the north, but this peanut is a northern hardy variety, and I'm really hoping to see how many peanuts we can produce on one plant. How cool would it be if we could grow our own peanuts and make peanut butter from those peanuts. I'm really excited about that. And I love Asian style dishes, so peanuts make a great addition. As I mentioned, we're growing garbanzo bean. The idea of making hummus from homegrown beans is pretty exciting. Also, falafel is pretty delicious if you haven't had it before. Black beans, we love black beans. We have black beans all the time. These are all things that are going to store really well for us all through the winter. So it's not just that we enjoy eating these foods, but we can make these food last for us all through the year and be more self-sufficient than we ever thought possible. I'm also planting a lot of flowers and I'm really looking forward to spreading flowers throughout the garden. We host Airbnb guests here, oftentimes in the spring and summer. One thing I love to do is to go out and to cut flowers and make little bouquets when they arrive. So I'm really looking forward to having even more flowers to do that with. Zinnias, of course, is one of my favorite, but I love poppy. I also love picking wildflowers. We get a lot of wildflowers here. And then I'll be trying a couple new things that I'm looking forward to. Another thing I'm trying this year for the first time is calendula. Also, I'm so excited about this poppy. It's pink and it looks almost like a garden rose. If you haven't grown poppies before, I definitely encourage you to look up some varieties. One of my favorites to grow is actually the California poppy. My sister sent me some seeds, planted them in with some other flowers like marigolds and then some mint. And that was one of my favorite little container gardens. It was always so overflowing and I just loved it. I know I'm very confident that it's going to reseed this year and we're going to see more poppies coming up in that area. But I will be planting them in other spaces throughout the garden because it is just a reminder of where I'm from and the beauty that exists in the state of California. Another thing I'm really looking forward to trying this year is the Three Sisters method. Last year I kind of tried this with corn and beans, but I didn't add the squash in and the corn was pretty sad, so the beans really took over and made the corn fall over. But it was still really cool to watch the beans weave through the corn and use that as a natural support. So I'm definitely trying this again this year. I'm going to be using a little bit different of an approach. I'm going to have one bed that's wider than it is long, and I'm going to block plant the corn in the middle. I'm going to plant the beans around the corn once the corn starts to grow, and then after all of those two things start to grow, then I'll be planting the squash around those two. There's a couple things I'm really looking forward to with this. One is growing more beans, because they're going to grow along the corn. Two, of course, is corn, because corn is so much better when you grow it at home than from the store and you can grow some really awesome varieties. For example, I'm growing a corn called Big Horse Spotted that is red and purple and white. That's pretty cool. Sweet Corn, um, Fisher's Early, that's an organic heirloom from New York. And then Glass Gem Corn, which is pretty much the prettiest thing you will ever see from your garden. 
and I'm okay if you can test that, but I strongly believe it is one of the prettiest natural things ever. Three Sisters applies permaculture to the garden. Essentially, you're using the corn as a natural support for the beans, and then the squash comes in as a ground cover to keep off weeds and to cover the rest of the area around those two things. Three Sisters pot is going to go right here in front of a pine tree that we have, and the pine tree is pretty short, so it won't be casting shade until like late evening. So I'm thinking that area will get plenty of sun. The last little plan I have for the garden is to have a bunny garden. And no, it does not mean that I'm going to bring my bunnies into the garden. <laughs> But what it does mean is that I am going to have a certain area of the garden that I am going to reserve for planting things for the bunnies. I know I could just go through the garden and pick things for the bunnies already, but I kind of want to have a special reserved space just so I can know where to go, where I can use all of that food directly for the bunnies. And so I'm going to be planting things like kale and Swiss chard, lots of different herbs like parsley. They love parsley romaine and some other greens. Not only will this be fun and will it be adorable to watch the bunnies eat the greens because it's really stinking cute. <laughs> they make this little crunchy sound with their mouth and you see their little mouths and they're just adorable guys. Seriously, the cutest thing on our farm. Except for maybe Justin. He might compete a little bit and baby chicks. We can grow all of our leafy greens and if I can grow them inside in the winter and feed them things like microgreen, then I can really reduce my cost of caring for these bunnies and at the same time improve their quality of life. In planning our garden, we are going to be starting a lot of things indoors, things that need that early start like tomatoes, peppers, eggplant. I'll even be starting some beets and greens indoors just so I can get them planted right away and have a sooner yield. I'll also be starting brassicas and I started them the other day in the live video that I shared with you guys. And so they're already germinating and just last night I started some more. And so those things are going right in our new grow station, our seed starting station. Um, and that has been amazingly helpful to us guys. I love it. I'm going to link that video above if you want to see how we start our seeds and the shelving system we built to be able to do that. It makes me so excited to be able to go to that little seed starting station and to water my seedlings. Right now we have onions and brassicas going there and then probably today or tomorrow I'm going to be starting some tomatoes and peppers. So I'm really looking forward to that. Now one thing that is started that I'm really looking forward to trying out here is artichokes. Artichokes are a perennial in many places, but here they grow as an annual. Isn't this little artichoke baby so cute? It almost looks like a succulent. It has little spikes around it. I find that so cool. And they're doing really well. They're really strong. Um, they took a long time to germinate. So when they finally did, I was really excited and the germination rate was amazing. We'll see what kind of yields we get. I know that they're a little tricky in the north, but I'm going to give it a shot because I'm trying to learn to be more okay with failure and learning as I go. Now, a lot of things you can direct sow, which can save you time, money, and space if you are limited on space. Things like squash and watermelon, root vegetables, you do not want to start carrots or radishes inside. Really beets either, but I've had a hard time planting beets direct sow, so I am going to try transplanting them because last year I had a lot of success with it. So there are a lot of things you can grow in a garden, even if you don't have space indoor to start things. Last year I did not have a good setup for starting seeds. I had TV tables and a clip-on light and then I used the windows and I noticed they really struggled. Windows are rarely enough light for starting seeds indoors. It's just not direct enough and so you really do need some grow lights or LEDs that can act as a grow light and I'm really looking forward to having much healthier transplants to put in the garden because of the seed starting setup that we did build this year. Well friends, thank you for joining me today. It has been so fun to talk to you about the garden. These days nothing makes me happier than talking about the garden. I want to share my love for gardening with all my friends, all my family, everyone around me because it has totally been life changing in the past year for me and I want to see that same change happen in other people's lives. If you're watching this and you haven't subscribed yet, we would love to have you a part of our Sunshine Farm family. So go ahead and subscribe so you can stay up to date with what we're doing here at the farm.